From allegations of preparing fake bills to charges of parking funds, the enforcement directed documents accessed by India Today's Munish Pandey, according to investigators, show money laundering and receiving foreign funds without adequate regulatory clearances and approvals. On India First, we get you the latest amidst reports that the sole intention of the endeavor was to cheat general public. Munish Pandey brings you our top story on India Today. I believe that the decline of the Indian media really explains the steep downfall of The Enforcement India. Directorate has filed a charge sheet against journalist Rana Ayub under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The charge sheet was filed before a designated court in Uttar Pradesh's Ghaziabad on Wednesday. The central agency accuses Rana Ayub of illegally collecting funds from the public in the name of charity and cheating them. The ED alleges that Rana Ayub has started three fundraising campaigns on an online platform called Keto and received 2.69 crore rupees, out of which 80.49 lakh was allegedly received in foreign currency. Foreign donations were later returned as the Income Tax Department initiated an investigation for alleged violation of the Foreign Contribution Regulations Act. According to probe officials, the three campaigns include funds for slum dwellers and farmers, relief work for Assam, Bihar and Maharashtra floods, and help for people impacted by COVID-19 in India. The agency claims the funds were received in her father's and sister's accounts and were subsequently transferred to her personal accounts. The journalist allegedly utilized the charity funds to create a fixed deposit of 50 lakh rupees and transferred another 50 lakh to a new bank account. The ED alleges only 29 lakh rupees was used for relief work. Rana Ayub is also accused of faking bills to claim expenses for relief work. Journalist Rana Ayub has rejected the charges, calling the ED charge sheet a desperate attempt to target her. Rana Ayub claims the law enforcement agencies are being misused to silence her. She says the funds raised by her were for COVID relief and were utilized to provide help to people. With Munish Pandey from Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Journalist Rana Ayub is in the eye of a storm with the Enforcement Directorate filing details of its investigation into allegations of cheating, fraud and alleged money laundering in court. But is this victimization of someone seen as critical of the Narendra Modi government? Or be that as it may, does being anti-government give immunity from investigation in allegations of corruption? Joining me on India First, Munish Pandey breaking the story down for us here on India Today. He's accessed the Enforcement Directorate chart sheet details. Nalini Sharma is India Today's in-house legal eagle. Also with me on the broadcast is Dr. Vikram Singh, former Director General of the Uttar Pradesh Police. Remember, it's the Uttar Pradesh Police that initiated the investigations and the Enforcement Directorate took it over. He'll tell us the latest as far as the investigations are concerned. But... Munish, I want to begin by the charges. <coughs> Prepared fake bills. Rana Ayub stands accused of making fake bills. Explain this uh, to us with evidence that ED has been able to gather. Well, Goro, as far as the enforcement directed charge sheet is concerned, remember this is based on an FIR which was filed by the Ghaziabad police under Black Money Act. Now, as far as ED's investigation is concerned, remember there are three important charges. But before going into the charges, what is the main allegation? The main allegation is that Rana Ayub launched three campaigns and these campaigns were for the charity work. Now, three, these three campaigns, she generated around 2.7 crore rupees from April 2020 in later few months. Now, what ED has alleged, and here comes the three points. One is not utilizing the money for which it was collected. 
that is the 2.7 crore rupees which was collected from the general public it was not utilized for the same purpose for example the covid or relief work in maharashtra assam or bihar the second is rana you collected this money in her own personal account and the money was same transferred into the other personal, personal bank account of rana you family members and also when a fixed deposit was made on the name of rana you and third is submitting the fake bills now as far as ed is concerned what they are claiming that out of 2.7 crore rupees which was generated through donation from general public of this country yes that money was not used only 29 lakh rupees was used out of 2.7 crore rupees 29 lakh rupees was used by rana you in the relief work and when rana you was asked by the enforcement directorate she she submitted bills but when those bills were scrutinized by the uh, federal provincey they found that even those bills are fake that is the allegation by the enforcement directorate the second main allegation is that when she got this money 2.7 crore rupees it was not uh, uh, deposited in different uh, uh, bank account it was in one bank account two bank account three bank account three bank accounts directly linked to rana ayub and family members so, so out of that so let's take this let's take this step by step dr vikram singh prima facie prima facie does this indicate intent to fraud the public collect money in the name of covid relief and park it in family members accounts or is this a mistake money collected for a good cause was to be used for a good cause only temporarily parked in daddy's account or some other account sir gorav ji it cannot be a mistake this has been perfected to beguile and befool the public into collecting money for welfare ostensibly and then to use it to make a fixed deposit in her personal name of 50 lakhs transfer the residual fund to her parents accounts as also the fcra requirements were not met with these are not something that one slips up on these are deliberate and i feel that a deliberate attempt to befool the public and the government to get across the fcra guidelines and the requirements and who gave you the authority that the amount collected by way of charity for the covid victims and then to transfer it in your personal account by way of a fixed deposit of 50 lakhs who gave you the authority surely rana ayub ji is a very responsible and a senior journalist very reputed i did not expect this kind of a conduct from her at least okay. number 2 transfer the account the money from her funds to her parents also have you filed gift return gift tax returns I, either two because any amount as you would understand that if we there are certain categories which are not involved in gift tax but under these circumstances i do hope that you have filed your returns appropriately if not well the ghaziabad case has now gone to the ed and do you think for a moment that the ed has any spare time or manpower to go on a witch hunt no certainly not okay. these are incontrovertible evidence gorab ji and i think it's a cast iron charge sheet you think it's a cast iron charge sheet nalli because these charges will have to be proven in a court of law and some some defense that is often uh, you know uh, put forward that it's a very minor sum it's just uh, it's just a couple of crores what is it 2.7 crore or 2.4 crore uh, does that make the crime or alleged crime any less grave how does the ed now go about this case well gora one thing we need to understand is that there is no doubt about the fact that trouble is mounting for rana ayu specifically because the charges against her are not just serious in nature because of the amount of the money involved but also because she is facing charges under several laws now by this uh, allegation that has been put by the ed where they claim that fake bills were submitted by rana ayub that she had collected foreign donations but all of those foreign donations were not used for the relief work that she claimed she is facing charges currently not only under the indian penal code which is of course regarding forgery submitting false documents and all of that but also under the it act the black money act as well as the pmla now the pmla charges that the ed is mentioned in the charge sheet that has been filed today are going to be extremely serious because recently we've seen a judgment come in from the supreme court where they've spoken extensively about uh, how the pmla provisions are not going to be struck down 
So for Rana Ayub to get some sort of relief from the court is going to be an uphill battle okay. considering that she has been charged under the PMLA. But at the same time one thing that we need to remember over here is that all of these charges will have to be proved by yes. the ED before the court because Rana Ayub time and again has said that these charges are unsubstantiated, that there is no uh, basis on the claims that ED is making and that she had used only the domestic money that she had received for the relief work okay. and she had asked the crowdfunding site to return all of the foreign donations back to the original donors. Fair enough, but the point and let me now come to the second charge. Munish parked funds by opening separate accounts of 50 lakh and this is parking money um, in accounts of family members including her father. Now, what, what, have, what have ED investigations in this aspect revealed so far? General Gaurav, uh, uh, you know, as far as ED is concerned, what they have claimed in the charge sheet, and this is according to the sources, that they have gone through the bank account details of Rana Ayo. Okay. Now, there were three bank accounts in which these three, um, uh, the funds for these three campaigns came into those accounts. Now, when these, this money, 2.7 crore rupees, was deposited in those bank accounts, there was a separate bank account which was opened by Rana Ayub. Now, ED is questioning and they are suspicious about this, that what was the need to open a new bank account on your name? Initially, the money came into the account of Rana Ayub, uh, which was uh, a joint bank account with uh, her sister and father. But they had given a power of attorney to Rana Ayub and she was only responsible for transferring those bank, uh, uh, transferring that uh, bank account fund. Apart from that, they are also suspicious that why 50 lakh rupees was used to make a fixed deposit. The money which has been given by the donors for the relief fund, that money was supposed to be used for the charity work. It was not supposed to be used for some uh, making your own uh, uh, fixed deposit or uh, transferring into your new account. That is what the ED has found and what they are claiming in the charge sheet, that this is based on the evidence. Apart from that, one thing which Nalini was mentioning about the uh, the money being returned to the uh, foreign donors. Remember, when income tax department had initiated this inquiry, then Rana Ayub was called for receiving rupees 80 lakh rupees through foreign donors. Yes. And when income tax department sent a notice saying that this is the FCRA violation, you are a journalist, you are aware of the FCRA rules, then she returned that 80 lakh rupees. Earlier it had come into the account, but it was again not utilized. So that money was returned and ED claims that that was an afterthought because there was an investigation by the income tax department. There was a notice by the income tax department. Okay. The third and very important point is there is also a donation of 74 lakh rupees in the yes. CM and PM fund. Now what ED is saying that again after the investigation by ED and income tax department, she deposited this money in the CM relief fund and PM relief fund. But if someone is donating money for certain charity work, if the person wants to donate for CM fund or PM fund, that person can directly fund. You have no right to misuse the fund which are being given by the donors. And that is what the ED has mentioned in the charge sheet, blaming uh, Rana Ayu for not only misusing the fund, but also not utilizing the fund for the purpose it was collected by Rana Ayu or her team members. Okay. Yeah, you want yeah. to intervene on the aspect, uh, and I'm coming to Dr. Vikram Singh in just a moment. Money collected in the name of COVID relief and then given in CM relief fund or PM relief fund and big sums. Now, is that illegal? Is that improper? Or is a journalist being victimized for being critical of the establishment? Uh, Gaurav, what we need to understand over here is that, first of all, what was that money collected for? Now, what the ED said is that there were three campaigns that were carried out by yes. Rana Ayub. One was in uh, 2020, April to May, where she had collected some funds for the slum dwellers and farmers. Then again in 2020, between June to September, she had collected some funds for the relief work of Assam, Bihar and Maharashtra. And then in 2021, May, June, when the second wave of COVID was going on, she had collected money for the help of the people who were impacted in co due to COVID in India. So having collected money for these three campaigns and to deposit it somewhere else is, first of all, a, mi a misuse of funds. Second of all, it's also misleading the donors who've originally donated for another cause, but the money is being used somewhere else, either for personal purposes or in another charity like the PM Cares Fund or the CM Cares Fund. Another very interesting thing that the ED said is that Rana Ayub had actually even utilized these funds for her own personal air travel from separate 
uh, places and she had given fake bills of these air travels and tried to claim it as expenses that were actually spent on the relief fund. So because using all of these aspects is how the enforcement directorates made its case in the first place about how much money was collected by Rana Ayub, for what purpose and where did that money finally end up and what was it used for. So does this, does this all add up as fraud, uh, Dr. Vikram Singh? Or can this be said uh, by, by a journalist that, uh, you know, she, she according to uh, reports that are emerging, has claimed that these charges are unsubstantiated because any money that may have come in would have come in online, deliver, transferred to a bank account online, transferred to her family accounts online. So would that be considered as a cast iron case, Dr. Vikram Singh? Gaurav ji, your brilliant colleagues have made it abundantly clear and in fact have explained the charge sheet and the charges very, very lucidly and clearly. Firstly, collecting the amount for purposes of COVID relief, then donating it to even if it's a donation where she should have stated first before she got the funds that this collection is for the giving grants to these government funds and not for COVID relief. When a fund is collected for COVID relief, it had better be spent on COVID relief. Then manipulation of the documents and expenditure fabrication of various vouchers and bills. The financial trail is very obvious. And to say it's a paltry amount of just 2.7 crores. Gaurav ji, I was a senior most police officer and I had a princely amount of 77 lakhs as a service and my total retirement dues after 36 years of service getting three gunshots. By no stretch of imagination, 2.7 crores is a minor amount and every rupee matters. And the financial trail of every single rupee that came into her account, diverted into her personal accounts, that of her parents, and also to the FD account, this will form a part of the investigation and why the FCRA guidelines were not observed. To accept something and then to return it is an admission of guilt and also spoiling and also vitiating the evidence and also tampering with the evidence. Again, a charge of 201 IPC can be brought against that you received, but when the uh, screws were tightened and the investigation started. Okay. You tried to obliterate your fingerprints and tried to return those funds. That also is an act of crime and uh, trying to obliterate the evidence. There are multiple things that have emerged now during the course of this 10 minute and a short uh, duration of interaction. And I feel that there's much, much more to it than what meets the eye even now. I okay. think it's a very, very clear cut, dead open and shut case. You think it's an open and shut case because the allegation, once again, Munish, is also illegally acquired funds from public in the name of charity. And both you uh, and Nalini have given us details whether this was money uh, collected for COVID relief or for farmers or for uh, other purposes. And then the allegation that laundered funds received from general public. Explain how was this alleged money laundering carried out? How is this money laundering? Well, Gaurav, under Prevention of Money Laundering Act, it is very clear that if you are laundering money, if you are involved in generating proceeds of crime, then it, you can be booked under Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Now, as far as this case is concerned, and as, uh, uh, you know, Nalini and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have gone through the charge sheet uh, details also, what we have learned is that the ED has got certain bank details, they have got bank transactions, they have recorded statement of Rana Ayub and Rana Ayub family members. When she was asked, Rana Ayub was questioned by the enforcement director regarding why this money was not utilized by you. Why this 50 lakh rupees was made as a fixed deposit on your name. Then Rana Ayub explained that there was a bank manager who suggested that if you make a fixed deposit, then uh, you will generate some amount of interest on that money. That bank uh, manager was also called in for the questioning. And when he was questioned that why he gave such suggestion to Rana Ayub, he refused. He said, no such suggestion was given by me. Apart from that, when the bills were submitted, those companies from where the bills were generated, they were called in and they gave a statement under Prevention of Money Laundering Act and becomes very important because under Section 50, all these statements are admissible as evidence before the court okay. under the PMLA Act. So they gave a statement that these are not the bills which we have given, these are fake bills. Now, where is the money laundering? 2.7 crore rupees being generated from the public for to use for something else. But the same money has come into three accounts of Rana Ayub. But again, there are two bank accounts, one for the fixed deposit, another new account. That money is being transferred 
what is the purpose of transferring that money? Now, ED is suspecting that is a clear-cut case of money laundering, money from one account being transferred to another account, and this money is not your money. This is a money which you have got from public on the name of public, on the name of uh, public work, on the name of charity, and that is how they have built the case. A case yes. under Black Money Act, Nalini, as well as PMLA. And does that make does that make it more serious in terms of? Uh, for the accused to be able to get evidence uh, in her defense or is there now according to the enforcement directorate a pattern to this crime? Uh, Gaurav, you know, let's just rewind back to Feb when I think uh, some of the bank deposits were attached by the ED belonging to Rana Ayub. At that time, I think it was soon after that, ED released a statement and in the statement it said that investigations conducted by the ED make it abundantly clear that the funds were raised in the name of charity in a completely pre-planned and systematic manner. Now, this is where I think the crux of the Enforcement Directorate's case lies. Pre-planned so, and systematic precisely, manner. Precisely. Because what they are trying to say is that Rana Ayub had collected these funds with the intention of either using them for personal gains or laundering the money. She had not collected them with the intention of relief, uh, providing relief or providing it to some people who might need it or on the basis of which he collected the money from the people. So because he said that it was raised in a pre-planned and systematic manner with vested interest, that goes on to show that ED will have to prove as to how Rana Ayub had the knowledge that she is going to misuse this money once it comes in. It was not an afterthought that okay. after the money came in, she decided certain part I'm going to set aside for the relief fund and certain part for myself. From the very beginning, it happened in a systematic and pre-planned manner is what the ED is trying to claim. Can lack of knowledge of law be defense in this case, Dr. Vikram Singh? Because um, an accused may say, my intentions were noble, my effort was uh, to, to generate funds for the betterment of society, but I didn't know a certain law was being violated. See the intention and not the alleged offense. Gaurav Ji, it is a well-established principle of law that ignorance of law cannot be an excuse or an alibi for not behaving as per the norms of rule of law. Ignorance of law is one thing, presuming that she was ignorance of law, but fabrication of documents and vouchers, certainly you are privy to that. Then the contradiction of what you said about the bank manager and the contradiction by the bank manager also goes to say that there was an absolutely well-programmed and orchestrated conspiracy to launder the funds and this was exactly how things unfolded themselves. Any investigation plan, and this is what the ED has done, I would compliment them for that, that the investigation plan incorporates all these aspects that the bank manager contradicted what Rana said, the companies contradicted what Rana said, and then you have something that whatever statement that they gave has crumbled like a cookie in front of the investigators. Well, ignorance of law is no excuse in any case. Fair enough. Uh we will see how courts proceed on the basis of evidence that has been uh, gathered by the enforcement directorate, Bunish uh, and Nalini and Dr. Vikram Singh for joining me here on this India First special. Many thanks. Now the ball of course is in the court of the law. They will decide on how good this evidence is for action to be taken so that next time Nobody collects funds in the name of doing charity and then uses it for personal gains. That is all that we have time for on this India First special. Many thanks for watching.